Hey guys, welcome back to Gardening with Creations by DX and Co. Today uh, I figured I'd give you guys a quick update on what's going in my greenhouse. Finally got some nicer weather today, sun's shining, it's uh, going to be 55, so obviously in the greenhouse it's going to be upwards of 65, 70, so it uh, should be beautiful in here. So I went ahead and brought out some of my, uh, or all of my plants that I currently have, usually in the grow lights. Um, so you can see the sun shining through the greenhouse lid behind me some moisture still on the lid because it hasn't quite uh, Evaporated yet, but that's okay. And so I'll show you what I have going on what's growing in the greenhouse What's not really taken off and I'll give you a quick uh, Garden tour of what I have not touched whatsoever in my garden, but a little bit about what I'm looking to do this season um, It's still beginning of April. So Unfortunately, I haven't been out here just yet to clean up the garden or anything. I'm trying to leave as much alone um, So the till it gets just above 50 degrees daily, so we'll see um, I think this next week and maybe into this weekend. I'll be modifying the, the garden a little bit So give you guys a quick tour apologize about the shaky camera as we're going along uh, But if you guys can bear with it, I'll show you what's going on Starters guys, there's the green peppers that we had transplanted uh, I told you guys, or sorry, mixed color peppers, uh, bell peppers, same difference I suppose, uh, different flavor. And the tomato plants are doing quite well, those are the red cherry tomatoes. And I had shown you guys that I had also transplanted my beefsteak tomatoes, which are right here, doing quite well. You can see this spot is still shady, the sun hasn't quite hit this area yet, but that's okay. Um, all of the cucumber plants I showed you a few weeks ago I transplanted are still thriving, getting their true leaves in. Um, you can tell the smaller ones that I had transplanted are actually doing, in my opinion, the best. And the reason for that is because they've been under the grow lights, not allowing them to get too leggy. Um, all of those pears and apple trees that we had transplanted, uh, the lemon tree back there, getting some more mixed bell peppers, um, really getting some good light here. Also brought out all the rest of the seedling starts to really get some some light. This is rosemary there, that last bell pepper, and some more tomato seedlings that I never separated out. Um, you can tell right there's why you want to thin out your plants. It zapped out all the, the nutrients and it killed all of the plants. This one's trying to hang on for dear life. Don't mind though, like I said, I usually try to save as many of my plants as possible, but with the tomatoes, I only want four of each and I'll show you in the garden. And you can tell here, I've got six there, um, seven and because the second one popped through, and then I've got six there. So I wanted four of each of healthy plants. So I have a feeling I'm gonna end up giving two of each away as well. So that's that guys. I've got my compost bin here. I'm gonna be turning. Uh, I'll show you guys what I'm gonna do to turn that. Um, got that going, got some cardboard on top to keep the smells down and I'm not smelling anything and I'm out here in the greenhouse and it's warming up. Uh, I've got my onions still growing strong there. Um, I think they need to be buried a little bit deeper, but yeah, I really just stuck them in the ground uh, to get them out of the way. Um, my video on the onion plant was really just to kind of show you guys how to do it. Um, but I'm kind of happy with the, the results. They're still growing quite strong in this colder weather out here. Uh, they do like that colder weather. We'll see what happens. Now I know I've, through research as they start to die off in yellow um, is when the, the onion itself is supposed to be ready. I don't know if the six inches of soil here is going to be deep enough for them. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And I've got them out of the sunlight underneath my workbench here. So um, this is just some, some blank area so that I could, if need be, transplant some of these these plants in the meantime till they're ready to go out probably my pepper plants i may end up having to do that with if i need more room for them uh before mid-may when i want to put them out in the garden the arugula is doing quite nice in here uh the lettuce is coming in but it's slow coming at this point and i think it's just because the really cold nights we've had and i don't have a heat source in here just yet i do have a space heater in here but I uh, do not have it on to save on energy, especially with everything going on today in the world today. Uh, I do have, looks like some possible basil starting to come in there. Um, and some dill is surviving from those transplants we did. Um, that's doing okay. And then, um, unfortunately, the 
the mint doesn't really be uh, spearmint and regular mint doesn't seem to be coming in and then the rosemary uh, that one is not looking real healthy but it's still velvety to the touch hasn't dried out yet so it's possible that it still could root and do something from that sprig of rosemary we planted again it was just too cold um, but I showed you I had some ro rosemary sprouting in those uh, seed starters, so hoping to see some results there. Let me take you guys out to the garden, I'll show you what's going on. There's the fence that I built last year. I actually uh, fell over from a windstorm, and I'm going to show you guys how I built that, and we're going to get it painted white before I put it back up. That's the only reason I haven't put it back up yet. So waiting the weather to warm up a little bit. That's recycled pallet wood and one two by four uh, that's there the rest of it's all recycled pallet wood um, and I'll show you how I made that really easy to do from some recycled wood and so you can see guys this is my garden area full of weeds grass uh, quite a mess this area doesn't get a whole ton of sun uh, I'm gonna do some pumpkins in here um, and hope to get them going right in this area uh, this area is all generally fenced off, so you know you can't come in this way. I'll show you the pathway that you normally come in through. Um, this area on the side, I'm hoping to get my raspberry bushes to take off. Um, looks like it may have snapped off, so that may not happen quite the way that I want it to. Um, and then from there, this is my path. This area, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with. I'm thinking maybe carrots because they don't need quite the sunshine as much uh, my path I just laid down I still need to level and do everything like that but I just laid it down last year from a bunch of free bricks um, you can see that I tried to do borders with some raised beds I'm going to raise these up a little bit again this is all recycled pallet wood um, you see I laid down leaf mulch this is where my tomato plants go uh, they did phenomenal in this space last year um, but it looks like I'm gonna have to expand it because I want to get four cherries and four beefsteaks So I think I'm gonna expand this over into this area over here um, and just completely uh, Get out this area right here and take pull back these bricks extend this board straight across to this other one uh, my strawberries are I, that started with one strawberry plant that I had purchased and Put it in there and you can see that it's spread um, through late fall into now early spread it out uh, spread out nice uh, quite well and so I'm really looking forward to harvesting some strawberries let the runners continue to go and try to get them to spread I may do a couple more strawberry crops um, I actually want to get this entire run of bed here uh, to be strawberries so my plan in the meantime, as you can see with the, where the tomatoes are, that's all dried leaves. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to lay down a weed barrier on top of that so they compost down. And then I'm going to throw some fresh soil on top of that. So that's my plan with all these beds. Um, I wish I had done it last year. I'm going to try to do it all the way on this half, which will kill out all these weeds and extras. I had mel honeydew melons and... Um, uh, cantaloupe growing in here and unfortunately we had a lot of rain last year so a, a lot of that got taken over by uh, powdery mildew but it worked uh, but they worked out now so this is the the other side of the fence you can see it's standing again built uh, this part here which is closed off at the moment because I've got it take this out of the way is my gate uh, just bought a quick latch kit from yeah I'm gonna have to mess with my gates not opening at the moment so um, looks like I've got some repairs to do in the garden already um, but a simple path I've got to finish up like I said um, I had some rows of Sharon's planted here already I'd done some trimming in the fall on those and I'll show you what that looks like uh, I've got to clean up a little bit here and along here this is where i'm going to put in i'm going to backfill this with all leaves and the um soil everything like i talked about i'm going to put in my pepper plants right along here in between this and this other rosa sharon plant here and then the cucumbers go right on that fence you can see some some dead ones hanging from last year there um the fence itself makes a great 
um, the ability to keep the dogs out, but also keeps it so the cucumbers are able to grab on and vine up. So cucumbers did quite well there last year. Um, as long as you, you trim them up at the bottom so they're not hanging. Um, so I'm going to do that and uh, not go too crazy this year. Um, and maybe in the fall I'll show you some tips and tricks on how to prune the Rosa Sharon so it stays the shape you want it to. So, and that's it guys for now. Um, you, that's my little garden, uh, but enough to feed the family and that's the important part. So, if you guys uh, have any comments, uh, like it, and think uh, it's a better way to do some of these things, let me know. I'll be show, doing some videos on uh, expanding these raised beds a little bit. I'll show you guys after I'm done. Um, and I'll show you how to make a, your own raised bed from pallet wood. I've got some pallets. I'll show you how to break it down and extend that. So these posts, in case you're wondering here, are how I trellis my tomato plants so they don't fall over. A lot of people like to stake their tomato plants with cages and or um, they like to put the stake right along it and tie it up. What I do is actually do a string method where a string runs from that one to that one. And I keep the pl tomato plants in line. Uh, so as they're growing, you wrap it so they can't sway. Um, you go e either um, side of it. And I'll show you guys that as uh, we move along. So, have it guys. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video if you made it this far. Um, I appreciate it. I hope you guys are enjoying your gardens. And um, I hope that you guys are staying safe. Uh, as always. And if you guys have any questions, comments, uh, comment down below hit like and subscribe for more content to come and hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future 